And there are three charges that have been floated in a, in a broad sense in this target letter from Jack Smith to Donald Trump. And I'd love to get your thoughts on the one that seems the most mysterious to me, the deprivation of rights uh, charge. What, what do you think that could be, Barb? And what do you think that that, what does that signal in terms of pot Trump's potential wrongdoing and liability? Yeah, I think that's the one that is surprising all of us. You know, the other two have been kicking around for a long time. But this is a charge that has been used historically when people have been deprived of their right to vote. The statute is one that was passed post-Civil War, uh, and it targeted Ku Klux Klan members who were depriving people of their right to vote. So it could be a theory that by trying to subvert the election, Donald Trump and others were subverting the rights of voters to have their votes counted. I think there's some other theories that it might be framing Mike Pence as the victim or members of Congress as the victim. And by sticking the crowd on them, that was an effort to subvert their rights to exercise the duties that they had. But I think a better bet might be that it is framing the voters as the victims here. Is that, I mean, Elisa, that, that seems <laughs> both kind of old timey and novel at the same time, the deprivation of the rights being not a specific person, but just the American public writ large. Is that risky territory for the special counsel in terms of the novelty? Well, you know, Alex, it may be somewhere in between. Um, earlier tonight, I took a look at whether others who, like Barb and me, have been focused on this investigation for some time, have looked into the deprivation of rights as a theory that could be advanced in the January 6th investigation. And indeed, a number of folks, including Donya Perry, who's been on this show, and others, wrote a report for the Brookings Institution where they said Section 18 U.S.C. 241, which is a conspiracy to deprive people of rights, could be used where the theory is not that you every American voter was interfered with, but that voters in battleground states where the fake electors were advanced, their rights would have been interfered with by convincing Mike Pence to disregard the legitimate votes of folks in those five to seven states. So it may be somewhere in between every voter in the country and something much more microscopic. Ah, interesting. I mean, the conspiracy to defraud the U.S. seems fairly straightforward uh, in terms of what that portends and what that actually means, Barb. But what about tampering with a witness? We spent some time at the top of the show talking about how tampering with a witness may not actually mean tampering with a witness <laughs> in this sort of singular, but that it could actually be, um, it's the umbrella for a potential obstruction of an official proceeding charge. What do you think this might mean, Barb? Yeah, my, my, my guess is the target letter identifies the statutes of investigation without describing a whole lot of detail. And so the statute is 18 United States Code, Section 1512. And as you mentioned, there's an awful lot of stuff that is packed into that statute. And the title of it is tampering with a witness. So it could be that maybe Donald Trump or others uh, suggested to a witness that they not tell the truth or something like that. But it strikes me as far more likely that it is instead 1512C, which is that obstruction of an official proceeding. And so uh, you know, and it, it can be a conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. So an agreement to do something to disrupt that joint session of Congress on January 6th, which has been used again and again against many of the January 6th defendants, seems to me a much more likely strategy here. But, of course, we'll have to see the indictment. And my guess is there will be things in that indictment that are not yet publicly known, which makes me very eager to read it. Yeah, well, you, me, and everyone else in America, I think, Lisa, you know, inciting an insurrection, which was cited in the January 6th final report, which was talked about in the model prosecution memo that we talked a lot about on the show earlier in this week or last week, who can know what day it is, that is not in there. And I think a lot of Americans who are incensed about what they saw unfold on January 6th are hoping to see a strong charge like the, the word insurrection in the in this in this charging document. Um, what is your assessment of of the fact that that is not apparently in the the target letter that Jack Smith sent to Donald Trump? Well, Alex, earlier you were talking about novel charges. Insurrection probably qualifies as a novel charge, not one that's used all that often. And my guess is to Barb's point earlier about not boiling the ocean. The department, I'm sorry, the special counsel's office, aided by detailees from the Department of Justice, is really trying here to come up with a streamlined theory of the case based on statutes that they've used again and again, where there is a history and not some novelty so that they can say with a straight face, this is not that complicated of a case. They have 
a small group of defendants, I would guess, and a fairly small number of charges and ones that they've used before again and again with success so that they can sort of eliminate um, as many unknowns as possible as they're going forward with this case, knowing that this defendant is going to be hellbent on delaying and obfuscating as much as he can for as long as he can up until the November 24 election and perhaps beyond.